everyone, this is Web Valentine, a easy CTF challenge from HXP. Um, it says create an awesome template for your Valentine and share it with the world. Uh, in this challenge, we're going to be doing a server-side template injection attack. And to do that, we need to bypass some filtering. And to bypass the filtering, we're going to abuse the interface between Express and EJS to pass in a new delimiter. Um, and with that, let's get started. So we're given a download file and a URL. If you look at the URL, it says create a Valentine's card, personalize your card with, uh, here's that template injection, uh, or the template parameter. Uh, we're allowed to pass name. Uh, if we look at this, this is an example Valentine's card that they provide. It's actually pretty snazzy. So you can see happy Valentine's day, and there's that name parameter. And so we get to supply that name parameter. So if we can say SJP, and it'll create a card for us. So super cool. Um, if we delete all this, we don't need it. If we try anything else, um, let's say name, we'll say, uh, common in these EJS uh, attacks, you want to do process. Um, we'll try process, see what happens, and says uh, only name is allowed. So uh, there's some sort of filtering happening on the back end. If we take a look at the included files, um, we're given a Docker file, latest node. Um, what's interesting is it's going to create this read flag binary. So that means we do have to get execution on the server. It's not enough just to read the flag. Um, off disk. So we do need to get execution, which we can do with server-side template injection. Uh, there's an index.html, uh, docker compose, there's only one container, and this app.js. So most of the fun stuff happens in this, uh, this node.js uh, app. So uh, there's a views folder. Um, it's using the EJS view engine. Body parser extended equals false. Um, and then after that, uh, there's only two routes. There's one to create or two main routes. There's one to create templates, and then there's one to render templates. Um, if we create a new template, um, this console log is mine. If we create a new template, it's going to do this validation and see if there's any percent, sorry, less than percent symbols in there. And if there is, it's going to make sure that uh, it belongs to a name. And so we're only allowed to use name if there, if it finds one of these uh, character symbols or these, these two characters together. Um, so your first idea might be trying, like, maybe you can do something like this or, you know, put in a null byte. Um, I tried a bunch of those. It didn't work. Uh, but there's another solution a little bit later. So it's going to build out that template, and then it's going to save it um, to disk under the views folder. So views, and then it's giving it a UUID for your new template. Uh, and then it's going to do a redirect. It'll redirect to this URL, uh, the get template. It's going to make sure it's a valid UUID. Uh, it's going to make sure the file exists. And if the file exists, it's going to take the query name. Uh, if it doesn't exist, it sets it to equal. This was mine. And then it's going to do res render template and then your query. Cool. Uh, the bug here is, well, two things. So we have server-side template injection if uh, it wasn't doing this check. Um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. But basically, if you can call out, if you can get arbitrary control, um, you can start executing valid Node.js uh, within these templates. Um, and once we can start executing Node.js, like the game is over. Um, but yeah, the trick is bypassing this name parameter. Um, it took a little bit of uh, time to find, but eventually you find out that this uh, res.render template query function is pretty interesting. Uh, and there's a couple of interesting things. First off is it's passing the entire query object. Um, so we can pass whatever we want here, and that's going to be sent to res.render. Cool. If we look at the EJS docs, um, so this is EJX, uh, just a templating injection. Uh, one of the features they have is this custom delimiters. So you can use question mark, question mark instead of uh, the, the percent signs. And if we look at how to do that, delimiters, uh, there's this options thing. And if we pass delimiter, um, we can use a different one. So we could change it to a dollar sign, for example. And so they have some usage here. So it's EJS render string data options, file name data options. Uh, in EJS, data and options is always separate. But if we actually look at the source code for how this works with uh, res render within Node.js, uh, we go to node modules, EJS, uh, lib, EJS. Eventually, you'll find this render file, which is the function that's being called. You scroll down, it, there's this thing that says special casing for express, settings plus ops in data. Um, this code's a little bit weird, um, but basically what's going to happen is in express, when you that first parameter, it can contain, to, where is it? In this res render, this query, it can contain both the data for the template and also options for how the template engine should work, um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so we can pass in options for the templating engine. Specifically, 
we could pass in delimiter is equal to dollar sign. And so if the delimiter that EJS is looking for is dollar sign, um, we don't really care about this check. Instead of doing name like that, we're going to do name like this, uh, which won't be checked for, uh, and we get an easy server-side template injection. Um, so to put everything together, now that we have an exploit, uh, there's one other complication uh, that uh, took me a while to figure out. It's that EJS is very uh, caching heavy, I guess. Uh, as soon as it renders a template, it's going to cache it, and it keeps the cache even if you change the delimiter for some reason. I don't know why that is, but um, so to do that, I make sure I don't follow the redirect because there's that redirect that automatically happens when you submit a template. So instead, I do allows redirects equals false, and it's easier just to do a salt script or do it in burp or something so you can block that request. But uh, after that, I mean, once we know the trick, the, the exploit is very simple. So we're going to create a new template. I just call this name four. The, the actual injection is this. Um, if you read up any write-up, uh, they're easy to find. You're just going to do process, main module, require child process, and then exec whatever you want. Um, I think we've done one of these before on the channel too. Then we're going to do post it to the template endpoint. Here is our template. We're just going to give it an example name, and we're going to say do not follow the redirect. Then we're going to grab the redirect out of the response. We're going to use request again. We're going to say base redirect, and we're going to add that magic delimiter. And so that way EJ, EJS is going to render uh, templates that look like this. And then from there, we just print out the response. So if we do it, python3, solve.py, we run it, hxsp, so will you be my valentine? Um, so pretty fun challenge. It's crazy that Node.js, uh, that render file, is used for both options and data. Um, that seems like that'd be a source of uh, many bugs, but who knows? Who knows? See ya.